Hey guys, this is Miss Sherry, and we are going to be reading Ida B by Katherine Hannigan, and we're on chapter four. On nights when he was done with the day's work, and we were full up for dinner, and Rufus was moping about hoping for some company and travel, and the stars were all out shining and looking like they were so close you could pick them, Daddy might say, Ida B, let's take Rufus and go look at the world while it's sleeping. All right, Daddy, I'd say back, and we'd head out through the fields and orchards around the base of the mountain. Rufus running ahead of seeing how many things he could stick his nose into in one night without getting stuck back or stung or sprayed. This was when my daddy would tell me deep and abiding truths. So I'd try to stay as still as someone like me can and listen. One night as we were walking along, Daddy took a deep breath, the kind that sounds like you're smelling something when the air's going in, and you're sighting out the air's coming out when the air's and you're sighing out when the air's coming out. And it means something important's about to be spoken. Ida B, he said, to make sure I was paying attention. Yes, Daddy. I let him know I was. I want you to think about something. All right. Daddy stopped walking and then I stopped walking because sometimes if you're saying something deep and abiding, you want something, you want saying it to be the only thing you're doing and listening to it to be the only thing the other person's doing. We both looked straight ahead at the fields and the mountain and the sky and then he began. Ida B, someday this land is going to be yours. Yes, Daddy. And the law is going to say that you own this land and you can do pretty much what you want with it. Yes, Daddy, I said again because I knew he was going to go on till I talked too. Like in church when the minister waits for you to say amen before he gets on with his preaching. But I want you to remember this. We don't own the earth. We are the earth's caretakers, Ida B. Here he took another one of those deep breaths. I'm grateful that we have this land and grateful that you'll have it too, but we don't own it. We take care of it and all the things on it. And when we're done with it, it should be left better than how it was when we found it. Now you should know that my daddy is a very intelligent man. Most of the time we don't disagree about much, except for things like bedtime and whether children should be forced to eat certain foods. So while I agree with most of what he said, I was thinking he might want to reconsider one of his ideas, and I was just the person to help him do that. When Daddy talks like that, though, I don't say anything right away. He looked so serious when he said it. We are Earth's caretakers, Ida B., starting off, staring off into the sky, wiping his brow and nodding. I knew I needed to wait a bit before I shared Ida B.'s golden and supremely important nugget of wisdom. So we walked for a while. But when we headed back towards home and we got to the orchard, I said, Daddy? Yes, Ida B. I do believe there are enough apples growing in that orchard that we sh could have a pie every day of the week and send a few to the Queen of England as well. Hmm, Daddy said. I gave him a few minutes to ponder that thought. When we were passing by the brook, I said, Daddy? Yes, Ida B. Sometimes in the summer, I'll get to sweating and stinking so bad that Lulu will hiss at me when I get near her, and even Rufus will run away. So I'll come on over here and I'll lie down in the brook with my clothes still on. I'll let its coolness roll over me, and I'll feel the stink rolling away too. And Daddy, it is delicious. Daddy just smiled. I gave him some moments to let the idea sink in. By the time we got to the edge of the fields, the moon was shining so bright, the path looked like it was glowing, like the moon was showing us the way home. So I just pointed, and Daddy nodded his head like he knew what I was meaning. Once we were on the path, I said real quiet, Daddy? Yes, Ida B. I stopped walking. When Daddy saw what I was doing, he stopped too and he waited. I think the earth takes care of us too. Well, Daddy looked at me kind of surprised. He stood there for a bit, rubbed his chin, and considered. Finally, he smiled and nodded and started walking again, and I came with him, and he said, 
I think you're right, Ida B. And we were quiet the rest of the way home, just enjoying the breeze that was blowing through the stars. Okay, guys, we'll read chapter five.